Hello and welcome to session number 64 of Outlander's Guide to Ludaria. Hello, everyone! Hello! Hey. Hello! Hi. Hi! Welcome, welcome, welcome! How has your weekend been thus far? Really good! I was mm -hmm. productive and did adult things, um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was productive, I did... Adult things, yeah. Baldur's Gate 3? No! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is an adult game. Oh, don't, that it is. Ki kids don't play it. Don't, I was don't, surprised don't at some things. Oh, you were oh no! Oh, you weren't ready. Right? You didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> you didn't know. Ah, uh, well. Anyways, adult things aside, and adult games aside, and uh, um, the D and D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, Just a bunch of 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 twenty year olds plus playing D and D. I, I hadn't <laughs> seen the. I'm just a little guy drawing, and it's very cute. It's just like, made it. Thank it's you. It's like a me. <laughs> yeah. In terms of proportions. All right. Well then. I have been informed that today's recap is in the Sid's hands. Is, is that right? Apparently so. <laughs> Wonderful. Because I had forgotten. <laughs> I was like, are you sure? <laughs> it's like, by right now. Session, I stole you? it. I grabbed it for myself. <laughs> All right. But you um, already have two inspirations. Oh, wait, one is for your birthday. You can have a third. I'll allow it. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> Yes, I'm feeling exceptionally generous today. Yeah, that's very, I'm very appreciative. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's been quite a week, so my summary is going to be quite weak as well. Uh, oh, oh, oh! That made it. Okay. No, it's... <laughs> Anyhow, last time in Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Uh, Nui assists us to the dream realm, and we find ourselves in the dream version of the tower. Uh, the Kralko lycanthrope werewolf dad is here, and he's not very happy, and he's found a, a, you know, this white fur uh, coat. It's very, very fancy. Uh, then, a panther that some of us may have seen before leaps into action to assist. Uh, Nui and Virion... Uh, arrives at the scene, and Virion has a slightly different appearance in grey robes and hooded, uh, now wielding a rapier and a shield of light. Very fat. Uh, not so great, though. This werewolf uh, guy, he makes minis of blood with sickles! Why the sickles of everything? Come on. Uh, anyway. Truly the worst uh, weapon. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, blood sickles, I don't, don't want to mess with that. I could get infected. I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> uh, Pip pinches himself out of the dream world when the werewolf uh, shows that he can, you know, sort of like warp between realms. And that's not cool. That doesn't make it easy to fight, man. Come on. Uh, anyway, Pip tries to remove the curse of the werewolf and in the process notices a three gemmed wooden pendant necklace. Uh, which the spell gets absorbed into one of them. Uh, Brooke also pinches himself to get back out of the dream realm, uh, and after some back and forth, and uh, a uh, potion that I don't think was used, unfortunately, which nope. might be in Brooke's possession still, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, decides to use a ability we have not seen before to warp back into the dream realm with instructions to cut out that necklace and that he does destroying one of the gemstones in the process even sadder news though one of the blood minions decapitates the panther and everyone is distraught emotionally both in world and at the table uh yeah, Brooke feels an immediate sense of loss after that. Uh, yeah. Tekka then grabs the necklace and does a little keep away effort for a little while before Virion backstabs the werewolf as it puffs into a faint green smoke. Uh, as Brooke slowly shifts back into the waking realm, in despair and sorrow, he crouches down to Sunny, petting her head. Uh, 
afterwards, everyone returns back to the non-dream tower. Bavarian attempts to comfort Brooke through all of this. And Pip processes emotions in a different way, should we say, <laughs> forming <laughs> a doll uh, using the werewolf's blood, stabbing it again and again with a dagger, causing many bouts of psychic damage. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Pip then writes a strongly worded letter to Granny about, hey, What's up with witches? Do you know witches? What should we do about witches here? Um, and the reply back is not great, honestly, because it's written on skin, and that's not great. Come on, we can be a little delicate <laughs> with that. Human skin, no less. True. <laughs> Brooke decides to have some time to himself, punching one of the nearby trees in rage before setting up a small memorial for Sunny. After talking to Nui uh, about the poem that Granny brought back about a snow-covered mountain, Nui tells us that the tallest snow-covered mountain in the Daria is located far in the northeast, which is plagued with nightmares, and anyone who dares approach and climb it is not deterred. Uh, very, I'm very confused about this whole dream realm situation. Ask Nui about, hey, us elves don't normally sleep, so what's up with that? And Nui comes up with the theory that Virya might have always been sleeping and that this is her dream. Who knows what that means? <laughs> uh, anyway, we continue our journey towards where we believe uh, Jamuel's staff may be. Uh, and Tekka, after suffering from many a werewolf wound and suffering a fever, now dreams of an unfamiliar voice saying, not that way! Before being pulled deep, deep underwater. And that's where we ended. Wow. Thank you, Sid. No problem. What well shall I name Good this job. inspiration? Weekspiration! Weekspiration! <laughs> Week. Week. Inspiration. There. So me. Oh. Oh. Did I drop the die? Where did it go? Sorry, Sid. <laughs> Wait, it what? Broke. It broke on the floor. What? <laughs> the die broke? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it only pieces? Can I just grab the 20 part? <laughs> 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 no, but actually, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Guess you gotta get another one. Wait, did anyone see where it went? Nope. We gotta send it another just... one as a scout. Huh? You have to drop another one and see where it rolls. But I guess. That was really Tell bizarre. What, I like, I made though. it. I see and I a single it hovering orange dot just menacingly over <laughs> here. I don't see a hovering dot. Explain yourself, Sid. Dot. Uh, I don't see that single dot, so. It's up in the sky. <laughs> uh, still can't see it. So. None of you see it? <laughs> no! <laughs> it's right there! <laughs> it's right <laughs> here! It was a message it. only to you, and only you. <laughs> no. It's not, nothing. Okay. I'm going crazy. Use your die. <laughs> and. Uh, Thank you. Did it end up in a community sock? No. <laughs> I am so perplexed. Did it end up in one of my bags? No. No. It no? rolls itself when we most need it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it. I, think I, I think it's over here. Huh? The dot? No, my. <laughs> the die. There's a weak, weak expiration by it in front of me. What the? Oh, hey! It chose you! <laughs> Alright, here's, here's the original one. Here's the copy. The All copy right. must be destroyed. Although, well, this is one of the, it's one of those instances, right? Where you have, like, a clone and the real guy, and you have to shoot the clone. And you have oh, to no. figure out on the fly which one is the real one, right? Oh, no. So, um... Well, we'll get to that fun thought experiment later. Oh, God. We can't move on yet.
What do you mean do we can't people, move on yet? Do people having birthdays week, this week get them this week or next week? Ah, uh, huh. Dennis, you may have your birthday. Wait, no! That's bad luck if it's ahead of time. We just talked exactly. about it. Exactly. What are you trying to do? <laughs> 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 time was problem, is, problem is that Dennis will not be here for next session. So it's yeah. his fault, really, if he's getting this uh, uh, birthday inspiration die ahead of time. It's a lot closer to today than it is next week. <laughs> also, birthday inspiration. Here we go. We have so many birthdays this month. Like, every year on this month. It's weird that it happens every year. <laughs> Not steak, but okay. By the way... Uh-huh? I think this birthday inspiration, when I roll a 20, should be a net 30. What? <laughs> Why? Appropriate to the age. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh! It's the big 3-0? It sure is. Congratulations for surviving this long. I'm glad you did. Well, <laughs> Wait, are you the are you the first among us? No. No. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, absolutely not. Sorry, I'm old. <sighs> I'm just a baby. Austin <laughs> is the baby. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wait, are. wait, am I the only one now? <laughs> uh, I, I'll be next year. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, You're oh, not alone. Like, oh. <laughs> when we started, I oh, was luckily. just nineteen. <laughs> I mean, not the campaign, like. <laughs> but <laughs> where did the time go? <laughs> you have aged way faster <laughs> since the start of the campaign. Yeah, it's just that stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my hair. <laughs> Uh, keep talking. I just realized I'm missing something. Uh, oh, I oh, know. Well, I found the menacing orange dot. The dot. The dot. <laughs> what's with the dot? Why can no one else see it? <laughs> what's in the What's in the dot? <laughs> is it it's here? Oh, it's is here. It, <laughs> is it by a tiny, tiny button up here or something? Tiny version of the. Yeah, oh. I have. I see that one. But not the dot. Oh, I see the dot! You see the dot! I see the dot! Where is the dot? I'm vindicated. Oh, there's a dot! Yes! Okay. Don't you touch it. I'm trying. Yes! No! I cannot allow. the source of my power! I still think you guys are... Pranking me. <laughs> I didn't see it either. It's been replaced, don't worry. Okay. What do you mean it's been replaced? Damn it. Did you okay, add a fine. new dot? <laughs> I have usurped you, Sid. Oh no! <laughs> okay, that's that's oh. enough. Oh, I see that's it! Yes! <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> okay. Alright. So <laughs> Tekka! <laughs> Hi! Are you, are you posting things on Discord? Wow. I saw that. Okay. So, Tekka. Uh, your restless sleep is interrupted by a voice urging you to turn around. And the very following moment, you feel yourself falling down into the darkness below through not the ground you're sleeping on but water and you're you're hit by the sudden cold of the water all around you uh, it's it's already seeping into your bones this chill that takes hold of you and the colder you feel the more lost you feel falling further and further and further and there is nothing you can do to slow the fall uh, roll a perception check okay
can trust anything you see in dreams, though. The darkness of the sea all around you is... Uh, it pulls away like a curtain. And all around you there are scenes, many, many, many scenes that you pass by. It's as if you're not just going um, just down this empty sea. There's people here. There are devils. There are locations. Just sort of almost like partially submerged islands that they don't... Uh, they, they seem to kind of be floating. They, they don't reach the bottom of the sea. Uh, so you're, you're spotting clusters of land that you're passing by one by one and on each of them there's something going on and you're falling a little bit too fast to really take in all the details but you definitely see recognize many many figures much bigger than you somewhat vaguely humanoid like in, in shape uh, but from from their horns, from their strange monstrous appearances, you have no doubt that you're seeing fiends. Dozens. Hundreds of them. Each one of them preoccupied, or at the very least, uh, for whatever reason, none of them really paying any attention to you as you're just flung further and further down. Until you arrive you land somewhat softly on the bottom of the sea in this area that is um it's uh, partially surrounded by uh rocks um uh, algae covered rocks um some of the uh, some of the um underwater vegetation here is emitting this very soft light, so the area you're in is somewhat partially illuminated. Uh, and despite being so, so far down in the, uh, below the surface of the sea, you find that in front of you there is a table, and on opposite sides of the table there are two chairs. The table is covered in food. Some of it in fact, most of it's familiar to you. The kind of food that you would uh, find and eat on the Daria. Uh, it seems freshly cooked, still hot, still steaming, and seemingly unaffected by the water all around it. And on the opposite side of the table from you, there is a figure. About twice your height, who... Um, just cheerfully gestures for you to approach and says, Ah, welcome, welcome. I've been waiting for you. Take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. The person who speaks, he speaks from one of his two mouths. Uh, one head on this otherwise mostly humanoid looking uh, uh, creature is that of a wolf. And coming out from the back of the neck of the wolf's head is uh, the long thin uh, head of a snake. Uh, wrong thing. Hold on. Where, where did I put it? Uh, 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 here? Hold on a second. I lost it. Aha! <laughs> Ooh. And your mini's here. Boop. Uh... Does that work? Nope. Gotta double tap it. There you go. Ooh. Oh. The two-headed creature is gesturing at the chair ahead of you. And the one on the other side of the table is significantly bigger and clearly meant for him. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka will hold his hands on, like, the back uh, of the chair, like, standing behind the chair. How did you know I would arrive? 
Well, I brought you here, of course. You're my guest. Come on, enjoy your food. Oh, uh, and yeah. you don't have to, yeah. to worry about anything. I mean, you're not here physically, not exactly. Uh, it is not a dream, but it's not quite a reality either. It's uh, somewhat more interesting than that. So if you're worried about the food being poisoned or making, uh, giving you a bellyache, no such thing. You get to just enjoy the taste. So you hold the power to call me down here whenever you please. Well, starting today. What's changed today? Well, you have taken on my gift. Uh, yeah, I think with that, with that tech of a, like, hold on to his shoulder. Uh, where he was, like, uh, bitten, I believe. <sighs> Ever since that fight, I, I... I haven't felt quite the same. And I think with that, like, Tekka feels like his knees shaking, like, getting weaker. So he's, like, eventually he will just slump himself onto the chair. Sit down. Similarly, the fiend um, takes place uh, on his chair. And um, he he crosses his legs and he's leaning forward a little bit, almost, almost excitedly. Uh, he says, well, you don't have to worry about the side effects. Not for too long. They'll fade quickly. And then you'll get to enjoy all the benefits of my gift. But we can get to that. First, uh, introductions. You don't have to say anything. I already know all there is to know about you, lost one. As for me, uh, you may call me Korthorath. If that is too difficult to pronounce, you can always call me the, the, uh, the Keeper of Drowned Secrets. Unless that's too long. Korvaroth is fine. So. What if I deny your gift? Korvaroth, meanwhile, begins to eat his uh, uh, side of the meal. Well. Alright, that's always a possibility, of course, but... Why would you? <clears throat> well, perhaps I should elaborate on what the gift uh, uh, actually consists of. For one, once uh, your blood has settled with its uh, newfound power, uh, you will discover that you are far stronger than uh, any mortal could ever hope to become. Resistant to diseases, uh, um, you get to sport... Uh, a, a new, delightful grin. And the wolf head smiles, just revealing this series of sharp uh, things. You get to enjoy a um, much uh, longer lifespan than you would have otherwise. Mm. And you'll discover a newfound appreciation of food, especially meat. How does this gift benefit you? Me? I... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to recall using the word gift and not uh, exchange? Trade? You merely get to enjoy it! So you give your gift without motivation when I can tell it this gives you glee like no other oh I do love it mm. it's, it's great every time this happens uh, I can tell that with you it was uh, unexpected you didn't take it on willingly that's quite alright <clears throat> there are many ways to obtain my gift and uh, well yeah I just found one of them and as for the one who has spread it to you I well, I have nothing to do with uh, whatever is going on between the two of you. I do apologize for the pain, I suppose. It doesn't have to be painful. So, 
So what is my life with this gift? What the word I would use is improved. There are no side effects. What would you consider a side effect? Hmm? And this fever you're experiencing, it will be gone within uh, perhaps the night. You do seem to be physically fit, so it should be no problem. I do not feel like me. When will this gift cause me to take action that I would not take? Porthorath leans back onto his chair. He puts one elbow on the table and rests his uh, lupine head onto the palm of his hand. You're not particularly excited about the hunger. Am I understanding correctly? Tell me. What is that hunger? What will I do? What will it do if I do not satiate it? Based on what I have seen of your memories, you have met two individuals thus far with my gift. Um, a third one also in very strange circumstances. I believe you already know what it entails. At times, when I demand it, You'll get to go on a little hunt. At someone's expense. Someone see, will hurt one. for your pleasure. Right, right, and you're uh, against acts of meaningless violence, yada yada, that is conversation countless times before, and yes, I know you are. Um, not particularly excited at that perspective, but one, I know you will deal with it. You guys always do, always um, try to see it coming. Tie yourself somewhere, have somebody watch over you so they know that you don't do anything bad. You will come up with some crazy ideas to, as a workaround for it. You always do. And, well, in my opinion, I think you'll come to enjoy it, though. You won't necessarily be opposed to it, but that's that's for the future. Uh, for now, since you have reservations, and I do need you to accept this gift before it takes full hold of you, perhaps I can throw in uh, some something a little extra to sweeten the deal. What is this second gift? <laughs> Well, a lost one. I have seen within your mind and I have seen within your heart. I know you inside and out, every vein in your body, every experience that you've had. And I think I know exactly what could uh, entice you. Say, for example, and he straightened his position ag again on the chair, uh, leans forward a little bit closer to you and uh, uh, grins. The snake head in the meanwhile has not spoken, has not emoted in any way. It has merely been staring at you, Tekka, just unblinking. While uh, the, the wolf head has been just very expressive. Um, almost, almost constantly smiling and he's also like gesturing like a lot, just throwing his hands around as he speaks. <clears throat> And he says, for example, I know you're not traveling on your own. And some of your friends are in need of help. I say, the little one, the child, the noose around his neck, a snap of my fingers, will be gone forever. No strings attached. It would be, in fact, quite easy to do. If it's so easy for you to do, why not just do it? Because I want you to accept your gift first. Uh, 
There's more. I could do something different. Uh, your, your friend there, he already has a way of getting rid of that curse of his, doesn't he? But I can offer something that no one else can. Something that only a devil could do. Uh, now, let me see here. He, um, he points with his index finger and he does like a little twirling motion and a bunch of papers appear on the table in front of him. And now with a much more bored expression, he begins to go through them one by one. Let's see, not this, not this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ah, papers, papers, papers. So much bureaucracy on my, uh, I mean, in my position. It's really the worst part of the job. Uh, not this, not that. Ah, here it is. And he produces just a small stack of papers and separates it from the others and says, You do know what we do here, yes? This whole handling of souls after their passing, all that? Well, it just so happens that uh, moments ago, I've been put in charge of a very particular soul. One of the ones from uh, the uh, your this other continent, what do you call it? Plurnin? Plurna? Plurna? Plurna. Uh, a very peculiar case. Somebody who died a year and a half ago, and yet whose soul did not reach the sea. It has been uh, withheld from us up until tonight. And now here she is. Let's see. Sandra, Elizabeth, Jen? Am I pronouncing this right? I don't... Uh, it says erase for Furbolg. No idea what that means. But I think you do. I could Furbolg. bring her back. Can I see that paper? Oh, sure. Knock yourself out. Um, is is it any language Tegra would understand? No. He, no. Uh, Kortharoth is speaking to you in Ezenfair, and mm. uh, the paper is incomprehensible. Symbols that you've never seen before. What is this paper? What are you registering here? What we receive is a full report of an individual's life. Everything from beginning to the very end. It includes not just everything they have experienced, but also every thought, every emotion. Every thought is stored here. There's more papers than just those. And that's the superficial summary. My work for tonight is to go through all the rest. Unless, well, unless I didn't, I was no longer in possession of the soul. And what happens with this soul if you do nothing, if you do your business as usual? Ah, curious about the afterlife, aren't you? Of course you are. All mortals are. Well, let's see. You get to hurt them. Especially this one. Because you see, nobody is supposed to escape their fate beyond death. But this individual, uh, what does it say there? Nickname? Sunny. Well, she has escaped us for a very long time. And we don't take kindly to our souls being taken away from us. So, if this deal of ours doesn't go through tonight, if I don't return her to life, if I don't fix the broken heart of your dear tall, strange-looking friend. I guess I get to have some fun with her. And the best part is that I get paid to do it. 
Who pays you? Uh, my boss? And at this, he gestures at the snake head. And he does that with like this kind of like, isn't it obvious <laughs> kind of gesture? So that is your boss. Always on your shoulder. Well, more of a messenger, a manifestation of his. Always keeping an eye on everything I do, making sure I don't mess it all up. So your boss has agreed to this deal? Well, n no. I mean, I have not discussed it with him. I'm free to do anything I want as long as I don't get in the way of my superiors. And this wouldn't. Ah, he wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka has just been like gradually like clutching uh, his quarter staff harder and harder. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely not approaching any of the food. It's just like disregarding it completely. If I make this deal, is there a way back? A way back? Like a cure? A way to get rid of it? Exactly. Well, if there was, would I really tell you? It would break my heart if you threw away my thoughtful gift. Fine, fine, How? fine. I'll be... I'll be truthful. I'll be... Uh, I will avoid being vague, because I can see that that's upsetting you. If you were to turn down my gift tonight, then you would be able to cure it. If you were to accept it... Well, the only way to get rid of it would be to uh, drain you of all your blood, which is feasible, you just wouldn't survive it. So you would always be with me. Uh, the way oh. you say it, you make it sound like it's not a comforting thought <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I thought <laughs> is my additional gift not good enough as I said I'm free to do anything as long as I don't get in the way of my superiors so if you can think of something else I'll give it to you. Anything your heart desires. I will ask one more thing. Of you. I love questions. Go ahead. Let's hear it. May we form a contract with one extra point to it. Portharath uh, was about to like reach for more food and he puts some in his mouth and he pauses without chewing and just with a mouthful he says, a contract. A <clears throat> Usually I'm the one who suggests to do those. Never had somebody request it. Well, I love contracts. Let's hear it. What have we got in mind? I can tell you adore your paperwork. So here. One point in the future. I will call to you. And you will fulfill my request. Whatever it be, as long as it doesn't obstruct 
your superiors. And you will fulfill that to the best of your ability. You will not cease ever trying to fulfill it. You you want to delay this uh, choice of a gift. Am I understanding correctly? Correct. Keep it for the future, huh? And give me no chance to say no when the time comes. Take a knot. Crafty. Wow. You know, I was not going to judge you by your appearance, but I can tell that you have the heart of one of ours. You know, when your time comes, I could put in a good word for you. You could join our ranks. Yeah, Tekka, I think, just like <laughs> looks away in disgust at that. I am running out of patience. So here's the deal. One request in the future and Sunny is returned to us. Then I will accept your gift. <sighs> My generosity never seems to be enough for you mortals. I offer you power, I offer you to bring someone back, back from the dead, and you still want more. You know what you are getting out of this deal. Roll a persuasion check. Mm -hmm. That is fair. Uh, oh wait, did you say perception or persuasion? <clears throat> persuasion. Got it. <clears throat> Let's see. Now, lost one, if you desire another gift... I should also get a, something a little extra out of this deal. At this point, and this is turning see. into more of a transaction. What are you after? Korthoroth goes back to eating. And... Uh, he leaves you without an answer for a little while. The snake had it as as Korthoroth is like leaning onto the table, grabbing food and enjoying it. The snake had does not eat, and it keeps shifting, like tilting its head ever so slightly. So it's always perfectly level, and it's always looking straight at you. You haven't seen it blink once. You haven't seen it uh, um, moat or really do anything. It's just been watching silently and endlessly. A few minutes pass and uh, uh, eventually Orthroth says the only way to make this um, perfectly fair deal would be for me to ask the same of you for one day call in a favor that you will have to fulfill and uh, I know what you're thinking so yes we can put limits on it you don't want to hurt your friends it will not be anything of the sort uh, you don't want it to be um, anything that would Roast you out or put your life in danger, whatever, whatever you want it to be, we can put limits on my favor. But I will ask for one. And for whatever limits I impose, you will find your way around them, I'm sure. <laughs> I will try. But perhaps it won't be needed. 
Perhaps what I will ask of you will be something that you as well desire. Wouldn't that be awfully convenient? We'll see about that. Would you like a piece of paper? Some ink? A pen? So I can even write in water now. That's... Oh, that's that's strange to you. Yes, no, 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 of course. That <laughs> That's quite easy. Fine. Then let's put this to writing. And and Tega will hold up like the paper uh, for Sunny. I cannot write like this, though. Then write in whatever language you're comfortable with. I'll make it work. Provide a translation for, uh, you know, myself. <sighs> Fine. And yeah, Tega will... Uh, Take the paper and whatever writing utensil is on hand. Yeah, uh, Korthoreth just snaps his fingers and you have uh, uh, available to you uh, whatever utensil you're more comfortable with for writing. Yeah, but probably just be a pencil, honestly. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, like some coal um, utensil of sorts. Um, yeah. And we'll draw out this contract, the terms he's defined, uh, and yeah, we'll probably do some outlines on the limits, but it will definitely not be enough, but it will have the basics, like it will not put himself at harm or like the, the people he cares about, uh, and will not um, put the content of Ladaria at harm. Okay. Um, Korthoroth comments on how cool it is that he's not the one having to write out the details of a contract for once, but otherwise he leaves you alone to just concentrate. He eats while you do, until he seems satisfied. He notices that you haven't touched any of your food, and with a couple of just uh, gestures of his wrist, the food is dismissed from the table once he is done. Only the papers remain, the ones you're working on, the papers about Sunny, and all the other ones that he had uh, summoned on his side of the table. He puts both elbows on the table, his, the, the, the chin of the wolf's head onto his hands, and he watches, just delighted at what's going on. Uh, yeah, I think if Pontifex was here, he would probably just an add enough complicated legalese that we like wriggle <laughs> out of any like binding contract clause here. But Didn't uh, he do yeah. that with like a sign? Like once he yes. wrote a sign and then he wrote so much he had to write in the back of the sign too. Pretty sure that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Tekka is not like that. Does not have expertise or the language to do so, and we'll write this very plainly. Uh, straightforward. Yeah, and once he is done, he will slide it to the middle of the table. Um, okay. Orthoroth would stand up at this point. He walks around the table, picks up the paper, gives it a brief look over, looks back at you, smiles, and says, all that's left to do is to sign it. How Does... do I reach you when it is my time to ask? Um, he taps the paper and an identical copy of it appears beside it. Um, he seems overall satisfied. Um, he glances back towards you and says, whichever method is easiest for you? Would you like to call my name out loud? 
Will you be the snake over my shoulder? You're catching on pretty quickly. <laughs> Fine. I will call your name. Then I shall do the same when the time comes. Uh, yeah. Tekka puts his pencil uh, against the paper. Uh, to, like, tapping it multiple times, just, like, questioning things, thinking things over, before just writing it in plain big letters, his name. When Korthoroth signs his name with this, like, massive, beautiful white quill, it is illegible to you. It's in that same strange script you saw before. And there's a be uh, the, the following few seconds after you sign both copies of the contract where you almost expect to sense something, to feel a shift in the air or perhaps around you, but it's like signing any other piece of paper. Korthoroth takes his copy and he hands you yours. And it is done. I'm aware you got out more of this arrangement than I did, but I will not make it easy for you. Lost one? Why all the hostility? I'd like to think of our relationship as something positive. Not merely co-workers, but friends. Do friends force gifts upon one another? Are they truly friends? You had a chance to turn it down, lost one. Suppose I'm just that persuasive. You knew you had the upper hand the whole time. <laughs> now, don't you wish to return to your friends and bring the good news? I will tell them, all right. And I shall let you go. And remember, all my name, and I will call yours. Where will her soul be returned? Are you expecting some trick uh, for me to bring her back at the bottom of the ocean where she can't survive it for more than a few seconds or perhaps to uh, resurrect her right where she was buried no 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 she'll be right with you right beside her uh, dear one fine then we are done here see I'm a good guy I'm not trying to trick you I'm not trying to uh, do something you wouldn't like. Again, it's a good relationship that we're building here. Are we done here? Right, yes. You... You may go. He takes his place back on the chair and... places the paper onto the other ones snaps his fingers and you fall upward this time you're pulled um, at, uh, at a great speed upward and upward and upward and further up you go the more you can see around you the light of the sun shining deep into the sea until you emerge and you're not uh, Far from the shore, you are where you were before. Oop. Give me a moment to bring uh, um, the scene back. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Oh, right, I still have to remove the tent on the this one. Off you go. <laughs> cool. Place yourselves back uh, on the uh, on the scene. Um, I mentioned uh, this last session, uh, Bavarian. You've been you've been watching over your companions. Uh, um, you you have been you have had a lot on your mind, uh, but you've st still kept uh, an eye on everyone. There comes a moment where. Uh, Nui fades back into existence uh, before anyone else wakes up. It's like she's just, she's just walking, and slowly she comes into view, uh, materializing uh, over the course of a few seconds, and she looks just like she did before. She gives you a bit of a like a knowing nod and sits back down on the on this bedroll. Um, you saw, you saw Tekka's sleep was, uh, uh, a little restless. You, every once in a while, glanced up uh, to make sure that Pip was still on the tree and hadn't fallen off. Uh, and Tekka is the first one to wake up. Usually, he's the one who sleeps in, uh, and he's the last one to rouse. But not this morning. And when Tekka opens his eyes and begins to sit up, uh, both of you see something strange. Lights coming from uh, the direction of where Brooke is resting. Uh, all these wisps of dark blue light just uh, uh, spiraling around one another and condensing together into just one bright, luminous form right next to Brook. Um, and over the, a, a, as time passes, Nui also glancing over to see what's going on, this light uh, oh. that has um, deposited itself uh, next to Brook takes on a humanoid shape that of a of a woman with black hair and uh, at the same build and height of brooke uh, and she appears sleeping by his side Uh, yeah, I think Tekka will be, like, gasping for air. He's, like, in a cold sweat. <gasps> a brook. I... I made a terrible mistake. Are... Are you, are you alright? You've been... Not... Okay, some... A lot of things just happened very quickly in succession. <laughs> um, okay. Are you alright? You were not sleeping well. Uh, you were a little feverish. I did check on you a few times. I am not well, I, and I will not be well for a long time. You know, I don't know you well enough to know if that's an improvement or not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that comment. <sighs> During our time together, before we met, there have been werewolves. These I've... creatures controlled I'm... by a lust beyond their own. And I made a terrible choice after our fight yesterday. Once Nui comes over, Viren's gonna, oh, like, remember and, like, take Orm out and just, like, let him sit open on the ground. 
Nui just asks a very simple, very short question. You know, points in Brooke's direction. Your guess is as good as mine. So, uh, werewolves, I've, I get that. That has been made very clear. Um, are there any other people who might want you all dead that I should know about? <laughs> <sighs> A gnome shot Pontifex. Pontifex is now gone. Are those, are those two related? None of us know, do we? <laughs> are you always this serious? What, what would you like me to do? I... You know, I don't know. So a lot of things have just happened very quickly all at once. Fine. I will explain it simply, as difficult as that is. In the night, my spirit, something, I was brought deep into the sea and met some keeper of souls someone who treats souls when they die and we made a contract I will now listen to his words his demands and be like one of those we fought yesterday. One of those werewolves. Basically, as soon as Tekka mentions, like, I was brought underwater and someone made a deal, Viren just kind of starts nodding along with him, like, mm hmm, I understand, yes. In return, that happened. And Tekka will point to Brooks Bedroll. You make a deal, uh, you get a little something now, they ask for something later. That's how it went, right? Right. And they get you in and they sit you down and uh, you somehow sit there feeling like you don't have any choice but to accept, at least tentatively. Am I right? It's as if you were in the room when it happened. Well, not this one, but, uh, you know, we haven't really had time to catch up. This A lot of has happened since you rejoined with us, but um, I was sort of in a very similar situation not that long ago, and I was dumped inside of your tower from a door that led to the ocean. By a devil. So. And you were given a deal. I was in exchange for not having my immortal soul immediately trapped in the ocean out of a place that I am unfamiliar with. I have to go open a door. A, a door? Which door? You know, he might have specified, but I am drawing a blank right now. Um, I'm sure I'll know it when I see it. Well, I guess you are bound like I am bound then. It's a, a precarious situation to be in. Always wondering when the other shoe is going to drop, when something that you didn't consider is going to come back for you. You know, my parents always, always told me to beware the sea and that we were safe on land. It seems the sea has its grips on you. Any way. 
can I say? Always been drawn to it. Some things don't change. <sighs> so, now we have to live with this. And I don't know how I, how I will change because of this, but you all need to know that this has happened and that things will not be the same. I understand. Um, you know, why don't we let the others sleep for a little while longer? You can spend a little time to figure out how you want to explain it to them because you will do a much better job than I will. I'm certain of it. Do you know who that is? The deal was for Sunny to come back. One of Brooke's companions. A furball. That is... I will keep an eye on you, certainly. If you want to know more, then ask Brooke. I just, that is a, um, from what I understand, that's a large price. I think you have every reason to be, um, concerned, but, you know, kind of nice to be in this together with someone. As I told you. This night was one giant mistake that I now have to live with. Wait till you get to be my age. You'll have a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> I... I think I need some more rest. And, and Tekka will just, like, sort of slump over, like, clearly just worn out, yeah. both just of a sleepless night and this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, yeah. We'll just sort of, like, have a passing glance uh, over at Virian and at uh, Sunny and Brooke. We'll see what tomorrow will bring. You know what? You take a nap, um, I'll make breakfast. Throughout that conversation, Nui kept just looking over and essentially trying to figure out if she had to freak out, but the two of you seemed pretty, like, calm, at least on the outside. Uh, so she, she looked worried, but not too scared from what's going on. I think um, once... Yeah? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say that as Virion begins to prepare breakfast, um, Pepe would wake up. Ah, uh, good morning, tree. <laughs> good morning, fire. Good morning, book. Good morning, Nui. Good morning, Virion. Good morning, oh, Tekka. Good morning... Uh. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you know what? It was a. It was quite the night. Um, I'm still waiting for Brooke to wake up. Also, I appreciate that you said hello to the fire before me. It means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, wake up! Wake up, Brooke! Brooke! You, you shake Brooke, and both he and the woman beside him, like stir ah. awake kind of sim simultaneously they make eye contact and then she immediately stands up and backs away uh, making a sound very much like Pips just now <laughs> Brooke would also try to back away go completely pale like what is this 
I look around. Are the others there? I see the others. What is happening? And he backs up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> 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 yep, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rook, she looks just like she did on the day she died. Even wearing the same set of armor, the sword by her side, the shield on, on, like, beside her on the ground now. She, her eyes just as wide as yours. Then she looks down at herself. Touches her own arms, her own sides, and looks. She she pulls off of the glove that she has on her right hand on her right hand, and she looks at the back of it, where the um, where the symbol of the two panther heads is for the most part faded. And then looks back up at you, and just. Tackles you to the ground. Very forceful hug where just both of you are immediately down. Brooke is, well, before he gets tackled back, he is in the process of trying to pinch himself. <laughs> see if he can wake up. You pinch yourself, and then that's why you don't see her coming. Like you're just focused on your arm, you just pinch and you pinch, and like it's quite painful. And then there's more pain when you're just. The breath is knocked out of your lungs, and you're, you're on your back, and you're just being squeezed tightly. What is happening? <laughs> Brooke, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I am not a panther anymore. You died. Uh, I did, didn't I? Well, I guess I came back! Don't ask me how, I don't know. She pulls herself up from you, and then she proceeds to also pinch herself. Uh, no? No? It's real! He looks it's real! Around to he looks around to the others. This is real? Do you see so her? So I don't think I'm in the position to be answering that question for you right now. Um, but <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, yes. Uh, what the fuck? You're back. I guess I am. Hey guys, I. You don't know me. I know you. I've seen everything. Uh, ever, ever since you met with Brooke, I've seen Brooke. I've seen everything you've been up to. I was always oh. there. Uh huh. Don't know how to explain any of it. She pulls herself back on her feet and then grabs your hand and pulls you up. He is still a little bit in a shock. But after a little bit of resistance, follows up and is now on his feet. <laughs> well, I guess all that needed to happen for me to be brought back was for me to die a second time? Well, who knew the solution would have been so simple? Right, so, um, hey, and she addresses the rest of you. I'm Sunny. Uh, pleasure. Um, I don't know if I should introduce myself, if you already know. Um, uh, Virion? Uh, Virion. Yes, uh, good to officially meet you, I suppose. Um, I'm sorry about the, um, dream world thing. I... You know what's good to see you. <laughs> it's good to be here. Wow, okay. This is a little awkward, I get it. Um 
Sorry for showing up like this. I think Brooke just goes in for a deep hug. Oh, <laughs> come here, Brooke. I... I'm still not sure if this is real. I've been having quite a few nightmares lately. But I missed you. I was always there. And I didn't go anywhere. You just couldn't see me. So you saw everything? Yeah. You you saw when I talked to Leo and what he had to say? Yeah. Who? Well, this just Ooh. seems to be a recurring theme with you, with our friends, isn't it? Not even death can stop us. Huh. I guess not. That's what I always said. Things always turn out okay. Huh. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's make breakfast. Wait, you already made some I saw, right, Rivian? I can... I Okay, I can smell food and you have no idea how hungry I am. Well, um... Not much... But, have that. Uh, should be plenty. Sunny will dig into her part of the breakfast just immediately. Nui's looking down at the book the whole time and just reading the translation of all the, the exchanges that are taking place and just utterly confused. Um, you, Pip, you me both. <laughs> uh, Squeak throughout all this has just had the biggest grin. Uh huh. Ah, love to see it. Love to see what? Oh, true love. I think Brooke just gives him a raised eyebrow. And then uh, Squeak is about to say something else, but before he can, Pip's voice interrupts through Squeak's mouth. But what happened? I don't understand. Why were I... you... Why, why? When you died, you became a panther, and then when you became a panther and died, you became sunny again? Uh, so... If you die again, will you become another panther? <laughs> um... About the second one, not really sure, but about the first part, um, well, and she looks back at Brooke and then back down at her own hand and says, I think we can talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, well, I think we got tricked. I think, I think, I mean, this has to have been on purpose, right? I've been thinking about it this whole time, and our training, it culminated on that day with those potions, and I think that me dying was part of it. Huh, I think so too, I mean, I had a letter written, letter written. That was supposed to go to Cass, which I have to change now. But <laughs> maybe for the others to follow along a little bit. When you decide to become a phantom, you go through a very hard training. You get a mentor, like we got Cass. Most of you have met him. And you subject yourself through hard training, potions, and other experiments. And they say that 
That's the end of this training. There is this one last test. That you have to pass to become a phantom officially. And they also said that there is a chance that this last test could be lethal. Could they were very clear about us. it. Multiple so times. Guess... Kept asking over and over if we were sure to follow through. So I guess that is where they tricked us. Because if this is true, if this is actually what's happening. Then they sacrificed you to conceal their information. Is that all they wanted to do? I... I have a hunch. And well? Sunny takes your hand in hers. She looks down at both of your hands. She's holding your left hand in her right. And... Her, her right hand still doesn't have a glove on. And when she does, as the two of you are maintaining this physical touch, the tattoo on her hand is regaining color. It's becoming uh, vivid and just... Almost like it's just been put on it. And then you look at your own right hand and you can see the tattoo coming back. And as she lets go of you, you can see that it becomes faint again. Huh. I think you and I know the secret of the Phantom Guard. The way they can make themselves more powerful and gain magic and all that the strength of two people in one two souls in one body ever since i died i've been with you i've been in you in your head seeing what you see and hearing what you hear i am your magic i think that happens to everybody every single person Every guard, every... Did Casimir know? Well... He clearly didn't talk about it. But... Of course he didn't talk about you... it. Nobody can. That's... That's why they do it. If you're that's why they make correct. sure that nobody can talk. Because otherwise it would be obvious if... Every single time somebody goes through that training... They always do it in pairs, and somebody always dies! We have to stop it, Brooke! Oh. We need to talk to Cass. That's for sure. Do we? And then... I mean, yeah, of course. But what if he's part of it? What if he knew that I was going to die and he didn't say anything? I mean... We're friends. How could he just let it happen? That's part of Are why you I wearing want to his talk belt? to him. Sorry, that's... <laughs> not relevant. Yeah. I am. It's pretty good. Yeah, I That know. is his secret of how strong he is. At least part good. But... <laughs> You're right. I kind of want to talk to Kaz, right, because of that. Because there are so many phantoms, and if Kaz knows, other know, we can't possibly take them all on by ourselves. We don't have to, to fight them. We just have to disband the entire organization, which really just means what? We get... We get to Brunolf? Well, we just spread the word. I mean, if everybody knew that half of the people that try to become phantoms are going to die, it's not just a, a chance, it's not just 
based on how strong you are, you it's just going to happen, then they won't ever have any new recruits. Yeah. Um, what do you? What is that called? The, the point, point world, world point, right? World point the, card, yeah. Uh -huh. It's a world point card. We we get and not just the cards. We we get to spread the word. Uh, we make I don't know flyers. Hi. Strongly worded letter. Yeah, le uh, a strongly worded letter, but to everybody. <sighs> Spread the okay, word. wait, 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 wait. You know, when we went into training, there was always a story, or we at least heard, probably through Cass, about this one phantom who did not honor phantom ship, and he got hunted down by everyone and killed. Ah, uh, you're right. Yeah, he I... did get killed. Agree that we need to do something about this. But don't you think we should at least try to see how Cass feels? I mean, as you said, he's our friend. Well, I thought he was. But no, you're right. You're right. We should talk to him first. I'm just... Ooh, got a lot of thoughts rushing through my mind right now. <laughs> Tell me about it. I <laughs> ah. first feel grief, then happiness, then grief, then confusion, then exhaustion. It's... But now you feel great, right? I feel awesome. I feel like I could pick up the tree over there. Take it with me. W I want mean, to see me try? Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd always be able to sleep in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you sleep? Yeah, that's my tree. Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't uproot it then. Okay. Uh, I can't help but notice that we've been having this conversation and kind of... Um, not involving the rest of you guys. And again, sorry, it's awkward. I would just shoot up like this. Um... I guess I'm here now. You know, can't blame you. I'll probably do the same. Not the weirdest thing we've seen, huh? This is up there. This is definitely up there. This is definitely up there. <laughs> but that's 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 really good. Sunny is great. She. Well, she knows you all already. You will get to know her and she can help us. Right? Yeah, with anything. I can fight. I'm better than Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you are still? Are you? Challenging me? Oh god. Do you want to tussle? I'll take you on. Oh. Um Five gold on Sunny. <laughs> well, now I have to make him lose something. Someone bet on me. <laughs> what are the, what are the odds going in? Um Is it like I'm a two not to one? Saying. You know what, ten gold. I'll, I'll put ten down on Brooke, just to have it been a while since I gambled. I don't know if I have ten gold, but you know what? I can owe you. Who rocks exactly, on Brooke? I have exactly ten gold. <laughs> <laughs> Do I, I take the belt off? Yeah, like, oh, well, this took that kind of a tussle. <laughs> oh, not sad. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Pip, you don't know about this stuff yet. <laughs> that was Austin. <laughs> oh, God. Not what I meant. Not what I meant. <laughs> just while that their conversation was happening, Virion did try to wake up Tekka just with a 
hey, breakfast is done, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, people are awake. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka will wake up, uh, like, look around him, still, like, disoriented, still sleepy and worn out. Um, then looking over towards Sunny, uh, then trying to pinch himself, then just shrug. And I wish this was a dream. Aww. And it turned out to be a nightmare. Brooke, I have something to tell you. Yeah, me too. Look at her. This is, this is Sunny. You saw her with me in, you know, under the dreamer's tree. I know. I am the reason she's here. You, what? You, you are? I made a terrible choice. And you should all know about it. This night, oh, after yesterday, something happened in that fight with that werewolf. Something branded me. And so, in my dream, I was taken away. Deep, deep underwater. Wherever fiends and other creatures lie. And I met someone powerful, very powerful. With the head of a wolf. Insistent that I make a deal. And now, because of that, I am like him before. I, I am this werewolf lycanthrope, whatever you will call it. I am not just Tekka anymore. <laughs> and in return, Instead of your soul being tortured for ever and ever, Sunny Yuva returned here. It, is that... Is that true? Sorry, I... I know you as much as Brooke does, and I know you're not one to make jokes. I just... Wow. Believe me, I wish... I wish it was not true. And yet it is. You're a... You're a werewolf? You can't tell yet. Neither can I, but you all should know it will happen and it will continue to happen and I will not stop it. But, but I can fix that. No, no. I was told as much. I agree to the deal and there is no way back. I am so, so grateful. An eternity of being tortured does not sound very good. I, I can't believe it. You've given me a second chance. I get to be here with Brooke, with you guys. You saved me. I did not do it just for you. I did that for all of us. I could tell how Brooke was changed after he lost his dream. Without all of us, we cannot make it through this. Brooke, we need you at your strongest and your best. <laughs> I mean... 
Thank you, Tekka. I... Whatever you need, I'll help you. And of course, I'll find the best of my abilities. That was <laughs> never out of question. But thank you. There will a come a day or a night where you will need to fend me off. Of that I'm certain, and I need you to be aware for that time. I am not just me anymore. You need to understand that. That, 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 is, that is, oh, mm. We definitely need to get in contact with Kaz. He he has he is a werewolf. He can turn into a werewolf. Maybe he can help. Not like get rid of it, obviously, but help deal with it. And until then, I will help you try not to hurt anyone when it happens. That is what I want to hear. And I would like to know what to prepare for. So I, I, I will also me. help you to, to the best of my abilities. Good. It hugs you. I think Brooke joins in. I am fine for today. <laughs> But I do not know what tomorrow will bring. Well, you're not alone. <clears throat> well, we'll take care of you, Tekka. <sighs> For now, we need to keep walking, keep going. For now, I, I feel like myself. I don't know how much longer that will last. And it's a relief to have Sunny here. Someone just as strong and capable. Ah, <laughs> uh, we talked about it? Uh, yeah, stronger. <laughs> Good, then that is settled. Stronger. I was offered food in whatever depths of the sea I was in, and I did not take any. So, gladly take some now. Mm. Who, uh, who'd you make the deal with? Someone with a wolf's face and a snake lingering on their shoulder. Some keeper of drowned secrets. Oh, really? My dad hates that guy. <laughs> always hogging the snack bar. <laughs> the snakes are normal, though. That's that's normal. Everybody's got those. I might get my own snake one day. Oh, I would cherish it. I can say I am displeased by him, for, but for other reasons, like torturing souls. That's, I mean, that's just part of the job. But why? Uh. <laughs> uh. Why is there a job <laughs> that has to touch your souls? <laughs> Go on, player. Explain my setting. <laughs> Hey, why do we why, why do we torture souls? <laughs> Scream has had an epiphany. This is, the, this is a part of his his Carter arc where it does sound bad when you put it like that. <laughs> okay, time Maybe to send the... a lord them to us then. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's to like, uh, like juice them, like get all that garbage out of them before we reuse them. 
you know, like when you recycle cardboard, you gotta squish it first. <laughs> that's that's what I'm gonna say before I even receive anything <laughs> from God. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Tekka's gonna like head over uh, and grab a bowl or whatever the the breakfast of the day is. Uh, Sunny, there is one thing you should know. One thing I was told. There's more? The fiends of the sea will be after you. They are very, very upset. Uh, what did I do? Apparently you are one of very few, if not the only, who evaded their grasp for a long, long time. And they do not like that. E evaded their... I'm really not sure what you mean. I didn't do anything. We were told that souls return to the sea when they die. You did not. I... I guess when you died... Instead of the soul returning to the sea, it returned to me? Um, okay. I have many questions and many comments about it. For, for one, that was not my choice. It's, it's not my fault. Um, doesn't and matter. I, what do you mean it doesn't matter? Next. Doesn't okay. matter. Okay. Well, um, why does that apply to us? That's not how the afterlife works on Plurna. Wait, you died in Plurna? No, but I oh, am well, Plurna. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. Next. <laughs> <laughs> if you die in Ladar, you die in real life too. What about our gods? <laughs> huh? The gods they of Plurna. Well, they don't matter either. Okay. All right. Well, they they uh, die too. I mean, you know, they get they yeah, get very tortured. Killable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets tortured. No one's safe from that. Okay. Well, uh, how about we uh, right now there's a lot I'm trying to deal with, but um on the assumption that I have some time to work on this, perhaps we can have a conversation later on how I could fix this. You'll be safe for now. That's what matters. I'll try not to die again anytime soon. Yes, please. I can't take this back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to leave your side, Brooke. Never again. Same here. Oh, this is incredible! I'm back! <laughs> arm, oh. arm wrestle me, right now! I'm not gonna ask a question about the belt this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, but... if, if you... If, if Brooke only has his powers while you two are together, are we gonna have to tie you together? <laughs> um... Well, let's test I... it. All right, Brooke, to... get your get your sword. No, 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 not the tying part. Well, no. Uh, how about you make your soul glow, uh, your sword glow? Hmm? Just do your thing. Okay. <laughs> Ouch. You didn't I... have to cut it that deep. Well, is it glowing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ooh. All right. Okay. Now Hold go a few it. steps back. Uh huh. 
and she's like trying to take steps and, and counting them and approximating the number of feet um, that she's away from. And you can see like the further she goes, uh, the fainter the glow the glow of your sword, which like remains until uh, approximately about a hundred feet away. Ooh. Let me write that down. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's going to apply to all of your class features. Um, everything you had lost while she was gone, all of those features will keep working as long as she is close enough to you. And the moment she isn't, you revert back to just having like only the extra attack. Okay. Cool. Hmm. All right. I'm wrestle. <laughs> and yeah, you you spend uh, just a small part of the morning. Just there isn't really any catching up to do. She knows everything you've done. Uh, you've done ever since she was gone, and uh, um, she doesn't really have anything to share with you. So instead, it's just this like joyful little bit of uh, like spending time together seeing if her strength is fully back she teases you about the uh, the beard you've been growing uh in the last year and a half um, come on let, let's see how um let's see who wins the like uh the fighting the arm wrestling um just roll an athletics check you will just be contested okay <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say I haven't rolled really well, but I have rolled better than you. <laughs> Rook, Rook, no! <laughs> no! Oh. I had rocks on the line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. If it's against Sunny, maybe don't bet on me. <laughs> I thought you could appreciate the moral support. I did. <laughs> Who gets the rocks? <laughs> Holds out rocks. <laughs> I believe that that was with Squeak, so I think Squeak gets the rocks. Okay. <laughs> Give some to Squeak. Mm -hmm. I don't... I don't think she's going to be very good at hiding it. Like, the entire time Brooke and Sunny are doing, like, their arm wrestling catchy-up thing, Virian's watching them. And so she's not hiding it very well. It's a very, um, forlorn look as she's watching them. Bittersweet. A poor Lauren look? Yeah, like, very... Not sad, but, like... Yeah. Miss missing something. Well, Alon Squeak is receiving information. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Downloading <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> hey, you guys want to hear something about torture? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to share, but if he wants to. <laughs> I was just screwing around with that, that other stuff I said. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> we, we like to consider it a very fair form of punishment. And really, it's not too bad. Like, you think of us like, oh, they're devils. They gotta whip people and make them scream just for fun. But that's not really how it works. Like, we're very fair over there. So basically, everyone receives the same amount of pain that they've inflicted upon others in life. And they get back the same amount of good 
So you give someone a cookie, we give you a cookie. You punch someone in the face, we punch you in the face. <laughs> it balances and purifies the soul. He holds up a peace sign. <laughs> and then they get sent back to be reborn. So it was the cardboard thing. Pretty much, yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so here's something really cool. When, wait, actually, I won't tell you this. This is like a, this is a secret of the afterlife. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. It, it's, it ruined the fun. I don't trust y'all to not tell anybody else. <laughs> But you'll always wonder what it was I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I'm not sure if that is really necessary. But, what kind of other jobs do they have down there? Torturing and... Uh, well, there's a lot of paperwork. Rook, are you True. looking for a no new occupation? I mean, yes, I mean, but... The phantoms are bad, but... I mean... No, I'm... I'm just trying to understand. Well, my dad is currently a middle manager. Mm -hmm. Uh, he works night shift. Um, and, uh... It's, you know, it's a lot of paperwork, but, uh, uh, you know, he's working his way up, you know, to provide for the big family. Lots of boys, lots of mouths to feed. Aren't most of them, like, grown up by now? Yeah. Okay. No further questions. I'll grow up someday. <laughs> Can you believe it? I'm like in my 70s and I'm still an imp. Ugh. I tire of this body. Listen, I didn't get treated like I was an adult until I was about 130 years old, so I understand. Oh. Oh. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, long lives. Yes, too. Well, are you guys ready to continue? Yeah. So? Mm-hmm. Let's go. It will summon With some Sonic? horses. <laughs> yeah. There's Sonic, there's Sonic no, can stay here. Leave her, leaving her behind. <laughs> Sunny does like a little clapping okay. motion. And says, oh, I love this part. And watches just pip so many horses. Aww. <laughs> um, Tekka's on... Uh, or, uh, Squeak is on Tekka's shoulder at this point as everyone's getting on their horses and he just uh, leans down to Tekka's ear and just says you should know that devil you made a deal with he's one of Magdragach's employees I had a dreading feeling that was true well should be boss one day, huh? Yeah, when well, I'm the boss, I'm I'm not gonna put snakes on people. I'm gonna put little scorpions on them. <laughs> Everybody will get a scorpion tail. Yeah. <laughs> but like instead of a, a a stinger, it'll be an eyeball. <laughs> I've got big plans. Big plans. <laughs> So you're going from two eyeballs <laughs> with a snake head to one eyeball. Yeah, but it's it's like weirder, right? So 
So <laughs> the, the clients will be like, oh, I shouldn't mess with this guy. He's got a freaking scorpion tail with an eyeball on him. And I, <laughs> yeah, I, I've thought all this through. <laughs> okay. So. Wait, why are you hearing me? So one thing, while you guys are like clearing, clearing your camp and uh, lifting up your things, uh, um, Tekka. Um, and you guys can take back your minis from this field. Um, you find yourself accidentally breaking, like, a lot of things that you touch. Um, everybody make sure you got your long rest in, in your, in your Carter sheet. And, uh, Sid, if you refresh yours, you should see, um, your strength score should have changed. Alrighty. Question, do I lose one or two or both points of exhaustion? I believe it's one per vest. Got it. Does Tekka still get a long rest? Or was yeah. it a restless night? Okay. Make sure. And um, yeah, strength has changed. Can you first? Okay. The... The other changes will become apparent over time. The first one mm. that I can notice is, is that he he keeps breaking things. <laughs> so when when he when he gets on the horse, he's just very 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 careful. Breaks your horse. You kill the first one. It was to summon the mechanic. It's okay, we've got extras. <laughs> no, I always summon eight. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got more than we need. I think it's eight per casting for horses. Oh, okay. And you still have two. Are they one eighth or one fourth? I don't remember. Uh, riding horses are one eighth. I think. Yeah, I, I summon eight. Okay, yeah. Wait! They're one fourth. Okay, that means you can, can make summon. Four? Four, but we have two two extra. Yeah, bosses. you still have the other two, That's so awesome. you're fine. Faroom. Uh, Pontifex is still missing. Yeah, how's Faroom doing? Pip is just going to be managing the mental health of these horses that have lost their masters. <laughs> <laughs> In this campaign, if you get a mount, you're doomed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just bad luck. And he was so excited about that horse. Yep. Um, I believe that Pontifex treats uh, dr uh, baby dragons and horses significantly better than he does uh, his dressing. Um, yeah. so the horse is uh, like, um, when you when you talk to when you talk to it, it is indeed worrying about where Pontifex went, and you just tell him, you know, he just went up to a to a farm, and uh, he's very happy. <laughs> a little frog pond. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Table. Oh, we're getting there. Let's go! Okay. <laughs> Who's taking the lead? Uh, in, in when no one offers, take a will. Continue. Okay. Um, give me two survival rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll take one from Pip as well. I did that. And then one more? Uh, yes, two, please. Mm -hmm. And I'm just checking this, and you rolled a 13. Okay. 
I'll take a D4 from Austin. Mm -hmm. One. <laughs> okay. Have you ever gotten your hands on a dream lily? Uh, um, dream. Yes, I have five. Okay, now you have six. Yes! <laughs> you find like a patch of these beautiful um, white silvery flowers. Uh, and when you go to like pluck them, uh, you, you pick like... You decided to not disturb the majority of them and just take the one that looks like the, the best with the uh, most symmetrical petals and uh, you just add it to your your list of ingredients. Um, Brooke, every once in a while on your journey, you pinch yourself again mm -hmm. just to make sure. You look to your left and Sunny is there. Uh, she is just smiling from ear to ear. She is finding joy in the strangest little things. She jumps on a log and balances on it, and it's... She laughs. She keeps commenting on how great it is to be walking upright on just two legs again. Um, she is swinging her sword around, hitting dead logs, and um, occasionally just poking you in the back, uh, um, feeling just full of energy and uh, just as strong as she was before. Uh, she doesn't seem to have really lost anything in the year and a half, and, and a half that she's been gone. Um, she's also plucking flowers and putting them in her hair. Uh, you're watching the sunshine on her face and this is uh, incredible. It's so bizarre, but it's, it's real. She's there and you have Heck has a sacrifice to thank for it, for it. I sure do. <clears throat> as for Tekka? Think... Oh, yeah, yeah. No. sorry. Go on. I think uh, Brooke won't really join into all the fun she's having, but usually whenever she is excited about something, point something out, smile at her, and at least engage in the conversation. But he's still very confused and apprehensive of the whole situation not mm -hmm. trusting it completely yet and you have many reasons for it for one uh, apparently you have uh, this is the handiwork of uh, fiends there's a chance that it might be after her that uh, your your troubles are not at all over you don't know if the phantom guard will be after you, the two of you and you're thinking about Casimir, talking to him, confronting him. Um, how Sunny immediately jumped on the idea of just telling everyone the truth and what that could possibly bring. You still have a lot to worry about. But at least for now, Sunny doesn't seem to have a care in the world. Uh, as for Tekka, Tekka, you focus on the journey, on keeping everyone on track and uh, keeping your mind busy. Every once in a while you realize that uh, um, your body feels different and reacts differently. You don't really see yourself being any... Like, uh, you don't see a physical change to yourself yet. You don't seem more muscular or anything, but you have to be cautious with every little movement that you do. And you otherwise keep your mind occupied, trying to just follow the path ahead. And the first day of travel since Sunny came back is without problems. You, again, have to sleep uh, outside. The tower's still inaccessible. Uh, the, the ember leaf gone with Pontifex. 
Sleeping under the stars has never been something that you disliked to do, uh, Taka, but it's just yet another reminder of what you have lost. And you don't quite know what else is gone yet. When the, the sky clears as, uh, um, the, uh, as the night continues and you're looking up at the stars and at the moons, you hold your breath and you hope to wake up tomorrow with no additional surprises. I do think so, that. Unless you have anything planned, I would like to talk or approach Varian. Maybe oh, when we're all Go sitting ahead. around the fire. <laughs> he will sit down next to Varian and take out the ring, look at her, and say, Um. I really appreciated the gesture and the support you offered for the last one and a half years. I was grieving the loss of friends, if not for even longer. So, and I didn't really have anyone to talk about it. Couldn't talk about it. So I really appreciate it. I don't know how you do it. Like, no offense to your age, but living for so long, I'm not even a hundred years old, and the last one and a half years felt like the biggest pain and the biggest burden I've ever experienced. So, here's the ring, and once again, if you need to talk about anything, I would gladly return the favor. Um, thank you, I'm... I am sincerely glad that you didn't need to have that conversation. I mean, it's not easy. I've lost a lot. But I have more to fight for than more to keep going for. Do you want to explain, tell me, if you're comfortable with it, what you're fighting for still? I am very intrigued. Making sure that none of what I went through ever happens again. That nobody else has to live like how I live. You mean... <laughs> you mean the war? The war? Before the war? You know... What happened before the war, right? What, what caused it? At least from our end. I mean, yeah. At least from what I've told, I didn't experience it, but... We were hunted and... Killed for the magic we use. Until we finally fought back. And when we were finally able to fight back, the war broke out because they didn't like it. Exactly. I'm not sure... I lived over a hundred years before the war started, Brooke. I lived through it. I never had a home. Because every time I thought I had a home, we had to up and leave. (sighs) 
I get that. <laughs> Knowing that that was exactly why we joined the war, because we didn't want to get up and leave. Were you always a fighter, even before the war? Or did the war make you a fighter? Maybe one. I didn't even intend to. I I joined a supply ship, uh, running supplies where we could, uh, occasionally taking ones that were left unsupervised, as it were. I mean, I knew how to use a sword because I had to, but I never wanted to. Honestly, it wasn't until... Uh... Can I have my ring back? Um... Of course. I'm holding it closer to yeah. you. Yeah, she'll take it and she puts it back on. You know... This is my wedding ring. Or is still, I suppose. Oh, and... And you gave it to me? Because I know what it's like to lose someone I care that much about. Tell me more about them. Virian gets incredibly quiet. Uh, I mean, he backs off. It's like, of course, only if... No. I can't. His name was Corvin. We met serving on the ship, and he died the day our ship sank. And that's all I remember. I'm sorry. It's why I have to go open the door. It's what I need to get back. When you get through that door, then what? Then, hopefully, if he holds up his end of the bargain, Major Gash will give me my memories back. Oh. Of course. Collateral. Well, same goes to you. As I said to Tekker, I am pretty sure this goes out to anyone else of our group. You're not alone in that anymore. So, whatever you need. Don't be afraid to ask. I'll do my best. Um, I'm sure you're aware. I'm used to having to put on the, the strong face. You don't uh, command a ship by asking for help in front of everyone, at least. Well, we're not in the ship and we're not in the war anymore. There are no real hierarchies here in this group so look i have over 420 years of bad habits to break okay yeah it might take it might take a while fair that's fair but i'm just saying i don't think you need to worry about that here no um, thank you it's it's hard to talk about When memories are all you have left of someone. You know, they can be so easily taken. That's... Terrible. I assume... It's similar that when your memories are taken, it's harder to process everything. And move forward.
I don't know if this is a loss I'll ever fully move forward from. But it's also why I keep fighting, because if I stop, if I become complacent, then he died for nothing. Everyone on that ship died for nothing. Do you know how hard it is to keep a ship running for over 200 years? It, it was difficult. It was the same ship. I do not, but... Were you the captain all the time? Uh, no. No, not on the first ship. Um, I joined it. It was a... It wasn't very big. It was a small, quick. Because we were meant to be small and quiet. Uh, our captain called it the Star of the Sky. Because we moved through nights. It wasn't until after that ship sank that... I came into my own. I don't want to talk about the details on that, but it was mine after that. <laughs> and she was mine. And... I was angry. And for the rest of the war... I wouldn't let anybody I cross forget how angry I was. Nobody? Nobody. Even people on our side? They knew where my anger was directed, but it was there. You don't start, you don't give yourself a name like Fairscar. Wanting a good reputation. Fair. Well. Hey. Hmm. I want to know more. <laughs> I. Some of the best memories I do have is from the groups I was with during those times. Some of the best memories I've had from this continent, Ladaria is from the groups I've been with, let it be Sunny and Cass or this group. So getting those memories back is a good goal to have. Conflict forges strong bonds. What can I say? I do look over at Sunny and smile. Yeah, very strong bonds. Take, take care of her. I mean, I know you will, but... Not a lot of people get a second chance. <laughs> I'll do everything. I'll do everything to take care of her, you, Tekka, Pip, Pontifex. Well, and if we ever see Telix again, I guess him too. <laughs> Just kind of clap him on the back. Thank you. Get some rest. Long day tomorrow, probably. I'm still a bit, little bit sore of from when that werewolf visited us, but you're right. Thanks again. And he also smiles at her and then gets ready to go to his sleeping roll. Your bedroll has been taken over by Sunny. Um, when you came back, did you come back with like a backpack or other stuff? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Hello, are you awake? <laughs> Get in there, Brooke. <laughs> oh, fine. Yeah, I guess I do have my stuff. Well, you can put it right next to me. Just, mm, I guess I will. And he helps her put out the bedroll. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> she saw you talking to another girl. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, no nope, hanky nope. panky in the shared camp. That's true. That's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, when the bedrolls lie, I do inch a bit closer and snuggle in before going to bed. Okay. <laughs> um, oh no! Heck is changing. <laughs> <laughs> it's too soon! <laughs> <clears throat> She will reach over with one arm. She just very easily gets it over your shoulders and pulls you in. And um, tonight you'll find out that uh, she is a snorer. Brooke, you knew, but the rest of the group finds oh. out. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> 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 you get used to it. <laughs> hmm. Um, now for the following day, Teka Teka still taking the lead. Uh it's on the second day. Oh, oh, oh! Come down your rations if you haven't already. Oh God, how many? Just one right now. Woo! Bad news, I'm back down to zero. Mm. After that. Uh oh. Pip <laughs> <sighs> will share if you need any. Uh, I'm down to zero now. That was my last one. We should and also probably look for more on the way over the day. Uh, I, I, I have decided that Sunny came back with yes, a full backpack of the things she used to own and include some rations. <laughs> She's back and brought trail mix. <laughs> a little extra from what's his name? Car and some other Car fish. Carteras. Car Just threw in some fish there. <laughs> Just as a bonus. <laughs> Freshly caught. Just for you. Thumbs up, Ateka. Full of them. A backpack full of only a bad roll and fish. <laughs> <laughs> a good combination. <laughs> Why is this called the dragon poke? Uh, I thought you named it. Or is... Oh. I haven't named it. <laughs> I don't know it's, what it's this been means. Like, it's been like that since I got here. <laughs> I... What is dragon poke? <laughs> it's a spawn. Uh, I guess that's the name of the beach there. <laughs> hey. Um, I think in the morning, uh, it would say to the rest of the party, "Hey, so I've been, I've been looking more into this." And he holds up the witch's pendant. Uh, the the wooden uh, necklace thing that the wolf was wearing around his neck. The werewolf, I should say. Uh, and says, This thing, I know what it is. And, Tekka, you were right. We should destroy it. What have you learned? The, the Krelko, I, I think that he was desperate. 
he was having a hard time hunting us down. I mean, we were going back and forth through all of these doors and coming out in different places. And... But he sought out the help of a witch and he paid a very heavy price to get this made for him, to give him more powers and to travel through dreams in order to catch up to us and kill us. But this thing, because he wore it, he forever bound himself to that witch. But nothing good can come of it, at least not for us. So we'll destroying that change anything? I don't know. If he's still alive out there, then at the very least, he might not be able to follow us with it. Like if this, if, if this is something that they can track on us or maybe it'll take some more time for him to get a new one. He might not get a new one at all. Or whichever witch will use him for whatever me. I agree with you, though. That should be destroyed. I'm gonna give it to you now. Um, yeah, I wonder, like, Tekka, like, trying to understand, like, the strength of his body at the moment, he's gonna try to just, like, crush the wood in his hand. Let's just crush the pendant? Yeah. It's like it's made of paper. Whoa! <laughs> That's not good. It crumples That's up good under your uh, the strength of your fingers, the wood splintering and reduced to just fragments. The gemstones, the two that are still in it, one glowing, one not, you hear the crack. When you open your hand again, they're, they've been turned into dust. The wind begins to already disperse the, the talisman. Uh, yeah, Tekka's eyes widen and he like stumbles a step back. <laughs> Just like seeing how there's nothing left in his hand at this point. Um, okay, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Pip, this is only a sign of things to come. Not something to admire, but to fear. That and was it... cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> Tekka is still so cool. You just can't help it, Tekka. <laughs> and Tekka is just, like, clutching his own hand, just trying to restrain himself at this point. Oh. <laughs> it just watching in awe. <laughs> oh, no. Not this. <laughs> well, another day, another chance to find funny looking mushrooms. <laughs> and do not trust witches. Except for Granny. <laughs> She always has my best interests at heart. Inside check. <laughs> <laughs> I make horses. <laughs> you think I make horses. <laughs> With the magic Granny gave me. Horses are never evil. <laughs> Maybe I should go a little crazy today. Maybe I'll make like 
bears. <laughs> wolves. Okay. Wolves would probably not be good today. <laughs> I, I was I was muted when I said it, but yesterday the horses were invisible. Today are you making bears? <laughs> <laughs> I I mean I can try. I have no control over what I make unless I've already made it. <laughs> Does Pip ever let's see go, a bear? Let's go crazy today. <gasps> yeah, let's go. got to right. Lived in the woods for a while. Oh uh, yeah, you were even attacked by one, like on the way to the wolf. What? You were you were attacked what by we? by it was a hawk bear. Yeah. Mm. yeah 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 yeah. That's right. Um, so you can I was, make a hawk I wasn't bear sure if which you'd wolf like. you were talking about. The, the Wait, original really? white wolf. Uh, <gasps> let me see. A uh, hawk bear. Oh my god. I'm unearthing these stat blocks. Ancient. Yeah, ancient. They're covered in dust. Uh, challenge rating. Uh, half. Really? That was in a half? Floor. <laughs> Nearly kill us. <laughs> the one, the one I can give to you is half. Uh, uh huh. Okay. Is... Yeah. Let's make four of them. We're gonna ride. A we're gonna ride hawk bears today. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. Oh no, yeah, that's correct. Boom and. I'll let you roll the d8 just for funsies. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I don't need this. I'm close to that. Two. Uh, they are. They're fast. They're fat. They're speedy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the horses Terrifying. are very uncomfortable. In the fast? Atul, the two of horses. Being surrounded by fast bears. Oh. <laughs> 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 they can't outrun them. <clears throat> Pekka, on today's stretch of the journey, the wind changes direction and you smell something. You know for a fact, it's quite easy for you to tell that there is someone further up ahead in the direction that the wind is blowing from and when you look you as far as your sight can see you don't really spot anyone at this point the landscape has become almost entirely barren of, of trees you're out of anything you could consider a forest and it's just grassy plains um, they're very hilly so you can't really see too far ahead because at some point your line of sight is broken by, by the hills but you feel confident uh, that uh, you're about to come across somebody. And as you more cautiously continue in the direction you're, you're heading towards, uh, sure enough, your, no your nose picked up uh, on the smell of a person long before your sight did. Uh, so in addition to your strength score having changed, you have advantage uh, on perception checks that involve uh, hearing or smell. Dang. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the person that's uh, traveling not quite in the direction you guys are coming from, um, but more straight to the west, um, despite the beautiful day, the, the clear weather that you're having, the sun shining bright on you, um, is just fully covered in fabrics uh, in a way that just seems like they, they should really be hot. Um, they have a hood pulled over their head and uh, when you're close enough to see, you see that they're, <clears throat> they're wearing a mask and uh, you've seen plenty of Ezin before, so you recognize this one as well. Um, they appear to be just traveling alone, and as they spot you, they just do a small wave of the hand, and they keep heading off in the direction that they're headed towards. Um, they don't seem to make an effort to, to stop and interact with you. Do 
You continue forward? Oh. What if they need food? <laughs> <laughs> I told you all that my best friend was an Ezin, right? Yes. <clears throat> no. I mean, maybe that <laughs> not me. <laughs> yes, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Even Sadie can say yes. <laughs> you didn't tell me, but I, I did know. <laughs> I go up. <laughs> I hand him some nuts. Okay. The gloved hand of the Ezen slowly reaches and opens the fingers, palm facing upward. You deposit some nuts in your hand and they slowly close the hand and wordlessly deposit the nuts in one of their many, many pouches. Uh, this individual seems to be traveling with a lot of stuff on them. Uh, many like many pouches that look much like yours, the ones you use to gather ingredients in. Um, a very large backpack that seems to be brimming with things. <clears throat> and they so, don't say anything? Uh, remind me. Mm -hmm. Isn't it pretty unusual to see an Ezen travel anywhere? Like, aren't there, like, there's, like, one in every colony or something like that? Uh, usually, yes. They need to get to those colonies. But from where? <laughs> 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 it is the first time that Pippa's seen one, or, or the party, I believe, as a whole, has seen one, like, just out in the wild. That's a wild Ezen. Uh-huh. Anyway, Pip just gives a thumbs up and heads back to the others. <laughs> Much like uh, your childhood friend, the Sazen is just very quiet. Doesn't speak unless they have to. Pockets of the nuts. And like this was a very normal and non-awkward interaction, resumes walking. I will let him take an owl bear. <laughs> If he wants it. Or oh. a if he wants it. <laughs> you offer a hawk bear to, to the I Ezen? I offer a hawk bear. In these trying times. To travel faster. <laughs> um, how long does the hawk bear last for? It lasts... Uh, you know, I realize that I like we, we haven't explained the hawk bear to Jory, but I have a feeling that like she can picture it in her mind. I, I can put two and two together. Yeah. <laughs> an hour. <laughs> an hour? Okay. So, you just <laughs> gesture at the Ezen, <laughs> this, this hawk bear. You what? <laughs> <laughs> you what? <laughs> Um, if there is a hawk bear not being ridden and you just offer it to the as and they silently approach and they get on the hawk bear and then they reach into one of their pouches and uh, they hand you something. Mm. I lost my list. Hold on. There it is. Um, one of their many pouches. And uh, yeah, there's there's something inside. What what's this? Looks inside. I'm just rolling for Do it. Do you not know? Oh. Uh, no, I'm, I'm choosing from I'm choosing from here, based on what's. Oh, while you're looking, Pip says to the Essen, "That's really nice, but you don't have to give me anything. 
this this hawk bear is going to disappear in like an hour. I just thought it would help you for a little bit. Um, they push the pouch further into your into your arms. Oh, thank you. Have safe travels. The coolest as in to have ever grazed the face of Lidara rides off on a hawk bear. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Oof. Mm. Virian, he was so cool. Whenever, whenever the kids would, 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 you know, mess with me, I'd go to Oof and I'd tell him about all my problems and he'd say, and it helped. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's actually merit to that. Um, sometimes it's good just to uh, put everything out in full sentences instead of letting it fester. He was a great listener. Sounds like it. We had a, a very good friend. All right, I'm going to look in this pouch tonight. <laughs> Tonight? Yeah, when you're ready. I am ready. Oh, I look in the pouch now. <laughs> uh, there are mushrooms inside. Yes! Uh, did I not say I wanted to find some funky looking mushrooms today? <laughs> I did! <laughs> they found you. Yeah, I'm heard you. Wow. I wish I had... Uh, I'm gonna find 3,000 gold today. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of mushrooms? Um, they look fairly ordinary. They have a brown cap and a white stem. There's a, Are they uh, edible? You don't really know. Well, actually, you have a chance. Roll a nature check. Oh, maybe you don't have a chance, actually. <laughs> oh no. Eighteen. Eighteen? No, you did. You're. You don't know them. What are these? They. They do coordinate. The shape is a little like different from uh, any you're familiar with. Uh, they're like a little taller and a little thinner. Uh, the. Uh, the caps are very. That uh, they're like angled downward. I uh, eat one. <laughs> you you bite into one and uh, you look at the at the part that's remaining in your hand and the exposed flesh of the mushroom uh, where, where you're bitten into it is this green like rosemary green color and then before your eyes it turns into a light blue and then a deep shade of red and keeps what? shifting between different colors. This is a rainbow mushroom. Oh. I, I need a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Pip's first in acid trip. <laughs> oh god. Well, it's not acid, it's a mushroom. But... Hey. Okay. Alright. You're fine, at first. <laughs> you, you find a mushroom, the color change your mushroom to be really cool, and you finish it. Did he just uh, now give you a kid drugs? <laughs> <laughs> but first one's always for, free. <laughs> for the rest of the trip, <laughs> everything else around you is also constantly changing colors. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um, you're, <laughs> you're also 
You're also confused for the next 30 minutes, which might be an issue. <laughs> ah, since one of the effects of confusion is that you might attack, people. yeah. <laughs> no, no. Oh, God. So, as I said, this... try this mushroom! <laughs> <laughs> as this child becomes belligerent, just Sunny gently is like, I, I, I'm just going to hold him until he's better. No, let go of me. Uh, like, stop turning me upside down. <laughs> uh, try, try giving him some water. Um, that's usually what we did when people. Sailors are a wild bunch. Uh, let me tell you. <laughs> to drink? I'll offer him some water. Whoa! <laughs> Brooke! Brooke, you're so small! <laughs> <clears throat> and that's why you have to drink this water. It'll make you bigger. Maybe. Or smaller, depending on what you that's like. That's not water, it's purple! <laughs> It's That's red how now. water always looks like. <laughs> but hey, uh, at least uh, like at the end of the half an hour where everything is funky, um, <laughs> you 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 find out what it can be used for. So I'll just copy this to you. Has other uses? Uh, <laughs> yes. Does it need more uses? Are they as fun? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, let me let me edit the message so we can refer back to it later. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. I just wanted to give you a rare ingredient. I didn't look at what you would do if you ate it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> that was fun. Uh, as you recover from this, and your journey continues, um, Tekka, your, your nose warns you of another approaching person and you guys come across another as in today what uh yeah Tekka will greet this one with a wave and this one this the fabrics are different it's a different height from the previous one but the behavior is otherwise nearly identical there's a wave and then they keep on moving unless Pip's you decide to, to stop something. them and interact. <laughs> okay. People give this one give nuts the... and an owl bear. <laughs> <laughs> a hawk bear. It's very a different. Bear. Yeah. Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to try and try and perfectly replicate exactly <laughs> what he did with the other Essen. <laughs> This as in pockets, pockets the nuts, climbs on the hawk bear, and gives you three sets of rations. Pip accepts it, looks at the others, and says, There's something weird going on. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't give me what mushrooms is... this time. <laughs> <laughs> what is so strange about a trade pit? You have made many before. No, it's... It's that there are, like, two Ezen traveling in the same direction from the same place. If you are curious, then we should ask. I have a conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh no! Although, to clarify, they weren't headed in the exact same direction. Oh. <laughs> um, actually, yeah, okay. 
Uh, Tekka is going to climb off the hawk bear. Uh, he's going to take off his backpack uh, and then ask Pip, Can you take this watering can out? Do not trust my own hands. Uh, sure. Takes it out. He takes the watering can out and Ollie was sleeping in it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I make some shuffling noises. <laughs> shuffle, shuffle. Holly climbs out eventually and back into Tekka's backpack. I like to imagine that, that Pip and Ollie, even though like we never do it, they talk occasionally. <laughs> yeah, I like that. And I hope like Pip never actually t- tells Tekka what like they're talking about. It holds the secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, Pip, follow me. And yeah, Tekka's gonna approach this desert. Mm-hmm. Who Good day. The Desin stops when when they're approached. And you I since you speak as a bear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They nod. We have questions. One, what is your name? And where are you walking? Will. And then they point in the direction that they're headed towards. This one slightly more north than the previous one. To home. To work. Work. To help. Always help. I have a gift for you. And yeah, Tech is gonna nod you. Pip to hand over the watering can. May your flowers be ever watered. <laughs> uh, remind me, the watering can. Yeah. Uh, what were uh, those properties again? Uh, yeah, so uh, like uh, Tekka's gonna give a quick description. This belonged to another of your kind, one named Fen. One that was gravely cared for. This watering can is made of crystal. And wherever you plant a seed, this will help it grow strong and bear fruit. May it aid you in your guidance and your work. I accept. It will be helpful. Plants are helpful. While, um, while Vil takes the watering can and uh, begins to just slowly take their backpack off their back and place it on the ground and open it up and find, make some space for the watering can. Um, the, who would that be? Oh, you know what? I haven't written this down. Oh, here it is. Ooh. So that makes all of you? Uh, yeah. Easily. Um, with both encounters with uh, uh, with the Ezen, Nui seemed to be a tiny bit on edge. She kept her distance a little bit. Uh, um, did not interact with them at all. <clears throat> Just stayed in the back on her own hawk bear. Um, 
I said earlier that this Ezen would have offered the rations to Pip for the Okbear ride. Uh -huh. Um. And I said three, yes? Uh huh. Okay, they would also offer three to Tekka. Hmm. Tekka will accept that. One more question. On your journey, have you seen a staff, a belonging, gone astray? Vil points in the opposite direction from where they're headed. How far? How many days? Three. Thank you. Piff, anything else? Uh, no, no. Good journey to you. And the second coolest as in riding <laughs> on a hog bear. <laughs> <laughs> while off. while they're make while they're making that trade deal, I think Tyrion's gonna clock that Nui on edge and go check in on him with her, take Orm outs and just you you all right? Um, seem a little um, amped right now. Um, she just shakes her head and waves her hands uh, dismissively and, and uh, um, on on Orm's pages. Uh, the, the answer is just very brief. Well, I won't push. If you would change your mind or something else comes to you, just um, come let me know. I'm apparently carrying this book now, so... <laughs> Okay, we can uh, hopefully figure it out tomorrow then. She leaves it at that. <clears throat> okay, so. Another day of traveling, another uneventful night, and uh, the following day, you come across another Ezen on the road. I knew it! And shortly <laughs> after that, you find a river. I know what's <clears throat> going on here. And uh, um, you have like a pretty good idea of like where you are on your map where the river's coming from and where the river's going and you know that you should be somewhat close to where the staff supposedly is and uh, it's at this moment uh, that uh, Nui just begins to speak just loudly, quickly she pulls like back uh, are, are we still doing hawk bears today? always from now on <laughs> Well, today, yeah, what's, what's number horses. one? Um, uh, today they are massive or tiny. On <laughs> <laughs> 1d2. Uh, you can make some massive, some tiny. <laughs> today they're, they're tiny hawk bears. <laughs> and with tiny, I mean they're just one size category. Smaller, so like they're medium. Um, they're <laughs> they're cool. struggling. Yeah, oh. struggling a little bit. <laughs> um, he he and... does have to make them every hour, so like. Sure. Yeah. This is just what you have like at this moment in yeah. time. Right? They don't have to last long. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and yeah, Nui is pulling on her own mount, uh, and she's shaking her head and just speaking and speaking and speaking. Um, and it's it's somewhat frantic. Uh, mm. and and so Vera and you. You take out the uh, the book, uh, and the translation you find on its pages is, is very clear. Mm. 
Is something wrong? Is did you figure it out? Okay. Also, uh, can I have a survival check from everybody really quickly? Yeah, I'm good at this. Mm -hmm. This is based on sight. Um, so, like, heck, I'll let you know whenever you have advantage on these. Mm -hmm. Um. Yep. Oh. That's an 18. Okay. Pip is the first one to notice this. Uh, as everybody focuses on, focuses on Nui, what Pip does is, does is to focus on where she's looking, or at least where she was looking before she started to freak out a little bit, and she's looking at the river. And it's just a river. You're in the middle of this grassy field. The hills have gotten a little bit uh, like more extreme in their... Uh, this level, and they go up and down and up and down, and uh, that's when it hits you. With the the way the landscape is right now, the river flowing towards you, and you guys having to follow it to get where you're going, you realize that the river is flowing uphill. Just slightly, but definitely in a way that should be impossible. It goes over the hills and then back down whenever they curve downward. But it's... Without a doubt, this river is going against all logic. You know, this is going up on the list too. <laughs> Um, what was the last thing you guys asked, uh, Nui? I, I don't even know. Um, oh, did she figure it out? She's here, oh, and yeah, I think yeah. then we got distracted by water. Mm, I, I distracted you with water. Yeah, yes, yes. I hold. So, okay, so you're not ready to go where we're going, which is fine. I understand. It's understandable. You're clearly... Something's going on. Do you have a place you can go if you need to, or is there something that we should be watching out for, or...? Is there a specific reason? Because honestly, I don't do well with people telling me things are dangerous and then just not telling me what it is because... Um... <laughs> Curiosity, all that. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, this is specific. I like this. I mean, I don't like it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Dewey, are those the Ezen, the inhabitants of the castle? And I never knew how how do you know? And that's where Raquel went. Right? Right. Maybe we beat her to it. Honestly. <laughs> we teleported around. <laughs> so can we go to that castle without making the choice? Or is entering it the choice in the first place? Nui is just uh, uh, like she's holding on to her own arms, um, visibly just a little shaken. She looks around and uh, looks at the spot over, like above uh, one of her shoulders, and then eventually speaks again and or translates. That is fine. And I believe all of us have something left to live for. So if we can somehow find that staff without entering the castle at all, that that is what we should do. Now, if you have a place you can go elsewhere from here, then that's where you should go. She pats the side of the hawk bear. For the next 32 minutes. We have Let's walked see. this far. It cannot be for nothing. She looks. She looks concerned. Is that I'm no stranger to heading uh, headfirst into danger. Not much difference. After, after a few seconds, she just gives this slow nod and sighs, and uh, she she remains there, just still awkwardly for a few seconds, and then she climbs down from the hawk bear, and she extends her arms at her side inviting you guys in for a hug. Oh. 
Uh, yeah, Tekka will join her, her hug, but not use his arms at all. Because it's still, like... <laughs> Just so be hugged, but not, not give it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah. join in. One at a time for any of you who are okay with this, she'll just mm -hmm. hug you tightly. With with Pip, um, she like her hug is like so strong she like lifts you off the ground for mm -hmm. for a moment and then puts you back down and then says she she says something directly to you and you have to like stretch your neck to look at what, what shows up on the book. Um and uh, uh, you read You don't have to do anything to pay me back other than just live an amazing life. There's so much you get to do now. Wow, that's that's ominous when it's just written down. <laughs> <laughs> she she would laugh too. think he's still alive? I mean, I know you don't even know how long you were in there. That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> do you, I knew I liked you. Do you have anything of his? Um, she pauses and shakes her head. Hmm. Globe. What's a globe? Oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well. Ah. Uh, I'm excited for you, and I hope that you don't let your search get in the way of living life but i know that i know that you won't really be able to enjoy it until you do what you have to do Seek us out if you need us. When we cross paths again, and we will, if I have anything to say about it, um, I still have more questions about the dream thing, so expect to see me again. Pip gives her a few rations. everyone yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean she'll take them she'll take the hawk bear she'll clear <laughs> her throat uh, and uh, uh, a little awkwardly just say in Plurinan thank you oh <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Bye bye. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> My heart. <laughs> and the s smaller than average hawk bear <laughs> um, will head in the direction that the river is flowing towards. And she 
she turns around on the bear. Um, like, she's riding with both of her legs on one side. And so when she looks to, to her right, she's facing you guys and she waves. The entire way until you can't see her anymore. I'm not okay. I'm not okay <laughs> and don't ask me if I am. Because I'm not. <laughs> you set her free, Pip. You did a good <sighs> So who's ready to head to certain dim? Uh, I, uh... <laughs> I do. Uh... <laughs> All right. So you follow the river in the direction that it comes from. Um, as Pip pointed out, it seems to not particularly care about uh, the landscape and there comes a moment where as you keep following it it eventually is now coming out of a cave that heads downward into the ground the river very obviously pushing against gravity in order to flow out of it Uh, only not too long ago, you guys dealt with uh, uh, being in an underground cave. And uh, uh, your experiences have not been the most pleasant. So at the mouth of this cave, you hesitate for, for a moment, maybe for a few minutes. You make sure that you still have food and you double check on your map uh, that the, you are where you think you are. and should still be headed towards wherever the staff is supposed to be and during that brief break perhaps as uh, a pip is considering the next uh, animals to summon an ezin walks out of the cave and gives a wave and walks out and away hmm is anyone picking up on something yeah. here? <laughs> we found the Asin factory, guys. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> the Asin factory. I've met these guys exactly once now. That's Under nice. those masks are the faces of dead people, guys. <laughs> dead people. <laughs> What are we to do with, with that? They made choice. Oh yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we went into a cave and river. <laughs> it did not go so well. Be where? What uh, mounts are you choosing, Pip? Um. Ah, uh, how much further is the travel? Uh, you think you should have at least one more like night? But. But the cave starts here. Yeah. Um. Interesting. Uh, can hawk bears see in the dark? They can. Then Ooh. yeah, we'll keep going with hawk bears. They are... Or they are... They are tough. <laughs> Let's go! Yeah. They're tough hawk bears. <laughs> <laughs> they stub their toe. They're fine. <laughs> Don't even wince. <laughs> they all wear sunglasses and a cigar. Yeah. Okay. And so, into the cave you go. And 
idea. Once more, a couple more times, you come across Ezin. All headed out from this place. Um, at some point, you're pretty tired and you're underground, so you can't quite tell, but you figure it's about to be nighttime or it might have already come. But the cave itself is unremarkable. It's naturally formed, no sign of any humanoid activity. Um, and it doesn't have any of the colorful crystals that uh, um, that you saw instead in the area where the, in the area where the Kralko live. Uh, it's just gray stone. It's humid. You keep following. You keep heading further down, but the river keeps climbing upward. And at some point, you stop and you rest up. Anything you want to do during that night? Uh, not roleplay wise, mechanically wise. Just let you know I'm. While we rest, I'm swapping out uh, my jewelry proficiency for Mason's tools for being in a cave. Okay. I'm better at rocks now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Pip? Pip approves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I believe that all this effort that you've put into your drawings, Austin, is not going to carry over. No, I know. <laughs> I just thought it would be nice to see our, our progress. It was nice, and look, you have a constellation. It kind of looked like a baby bird coming out of an egg. No more. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> like a really Aww. long beak. Aww. Now he's dead. His line stays. Ponifex is going to be so upset at all he's missing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's having like a a better adventure. What? Wait, he's on <laughs> vacation. He's on vacation. Fun fact, he's, he's having a really good. Re he's at a spa. <laughs> and the crazy <laughs> thing is, they think I'm dead or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show up with my nails done. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's redeeming all the coupons that he's been collecting. <laughs> Finally. Um, and yeah, the following day, as you continue further down the cave, you begin to come across more and more Ezen, and this time not all of them are leaving. Some of them are just around plucking mushrooms or collecting water from the river seemingly just living leading a life here underground and there comes a moment when the cave just opens up into this massive open area further ahead of you you can see this construction this shimmering, uh, partially, uh, mainly transparent castle that matches exactly the miniature that uh, <clears throat> that Alex had gotten a long time back. Every spire, every street on on that castle is uh, from where you are, from your perspective, matches exactly the uh, real life-sized one that is ahead of you. And it's the the ceiling of the cave is so far up that you actually don't see it. There is something uh, almost like a fog that doesn't let you see too far in any direction. Doesn't let you see the ceiling either. And it's dark in here, but the castle itself is lit. The streets are lit. There's people around, as in. Hundreds of them. But despite the castle seemingly being full of people, the entire area is just really, really quiet. And as you arrive at your destination, this 
is where I call the session. Oh, that looks uh, cool. Oh, it looks so cool. Amazing. So, couple of things. Um, one, I'm going to finish giving uh, uh, Tekka all of his features. Two, uh -oh. what I was thinking was uh, uh, that Sunny can have like sidekick uh, levels. Um, and you guys can control her in combat. Uh, do do you feel do you feel cool with controlling two Carters, Dennis? <laughs> sure. The the sidekicks are like simpli simplified versions of player characters, and uh, she'd be the warrior kind. So you're essentially playing a simplified fight, simplified fighter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does it work? Cool. Shame you won't work. be here next week. <laughs> 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 yeah. We're not gonna get in a fight with a bunch of Ezid, are we? <laughs> sure. Um and yeah, welcome to the castle. Ooh. I'm excited. Ooh, music. Music. That flute, it hit hard. He went saddle flute. <laughs> wow. Cool oh man. Great revelations. Definitely. Um, man, Sid. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Making moves. I was on the edge of my seat that whole conversation <laughs> with with. Uh, um, say the name. Say the name. Co Coco. Wow, what Coco. Whatever. Coco Buff. Co Coco the Devil. I sure, I sure hope he gave you his real name. Otherwise, you got a horrible <laughs> deal. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. Damn. Good deal. Good deal. I like it. We got stronger. We got Sunny back. No downsides. <laughs> no no <Yeah>. downsides. <laughs> I wasn't entirely sure. Like, I... I was like, man, if he breaks Pip's curse, like, that's... That's it. <laughs> yeah, new character time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm free. Also, no. thank you for not asking him to get Talix back, because... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I'm going to call the stream here. Yes. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for joining me today. And yeah, I'll see you Sorry most most of enemy. you next week. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.